Welcome back. Now we're going to talk about the use of ELPs in biotechnology. Now, when we talk about biotechnology, we can do we can mean a lot of things and we can do lots of things. We can create vaccines. We can talk about gene delivery, for example, especially of messenger RNAs. Gene editing, which is not only probably the future, but it's also a very interesting topic, uh, especially with regards of bioethics. Theragnostic, we will, we will um, define in just a moment. Imaging, so we can selectively image tumors and also drug delivery. Theragnostics means that you can diagnose a disease at the same time you can treat it. And in this very nice review from Kim and co-workers from last year, they focus on two particular VLP systems that are very robust. One is, uh, is Qbeta, which is derived from uh, uh, one of the few bacteriophages that have a single stranded RNA genome, which is Qbeta, and the other one is derived from hepatitis B. For example, uh, you can package gall uh, gallium and GFP, so you can have a fluorescent particle that also can be detected by a conventional fluorescent microscope and also by PET scan. Uh, you can also add, um, uh, um, you know, interfering RNAs and use them for uh, chemotherapy. Uh, you can use near infrared fluorescence to uh, make them active. You can use chemical conjugation. You can do a lot of different things with these VLPs. For example, uh, in, in this work, uh, the hepatitis B core protein, which you will normally find it as HIV antigen, uh, can be modified by adding a, a sequence, in this case the RGD, and also to encapsulate a, a, a particle of interest, or in this case not a particle but a, a chemical entity, that will activate in the presence of uh, light, a very specific light. And now, here they're using the advantage that tumors are highly vascular systems. That means that when you have a tumor, lots of, uh, of, of there are a lot of uh, blood vessels going towards the tumor. So you end up localizing it, as we can see in the bottom line of figure B, uh, that most of the virus will go towards the tumor. And then you can, uh, you can add light to excite this, the molecule that you package, and then you can see in panel C how where you have the, the sample, the, vir the virus will start hitting, and that way you'll go you're going to be able to burn, literally burn the tumor. Drug delivery, we have you know, a wide range of options. Calpiclora to model virus is one of my favorites because we know how to sample it, but you can use you know, hepatitis B, you can use other plant viruses, you can use even food mouse disease virus, MS2, and then you can add, for example, for, you can add uh, cisplatin or, or dogs, which is used for chemotherapy silencing microRNA RNAs. Uh, in some of these cases you can make active uh, targeting of passive. It all depends on how you do it. For example, if you want to add doxycycline, uh, you need to have a chemical uh, conjugation, but if uh, in other cases you can also encapsulate it without needing to make chemical conjugation. So, uh, for example, the Steinmetz lab in UC San, uh, San Diego, sorry, they have modified plant viruses to have doxorubicin uh, to incorporate, you know, this this chemical under different conditions, and then they can either have high levels of surface-bound doxorubicin or sur or low levels, and they can really regulate how much you can add by just changing the buffer. You will use. They are using also potato X virus to add a Dr. Rubicin, which is used for cancer. And for example, just by mixing for five days at room temperature and then you purify it to 
you know, eliminate the excess of dots, then you will load this, this filament. And this is very peculiar because for some reason, not plant viruses, when injected into the vascular system, are preferentially uh, uh, uptaken by, the, uh, by tumor cells. And this is very, very interesting. The same has been done with tobacco mosaic virus, which looks a lot like PBX, although this is a stiff rod, it's a flexible rod. And QBeta, which is probably, you know, this is a very uh, good system because you can produce tons of them in, um, in, in bacteria. And then you can use very, you know, uh, well-defined uh, synthetic pathways to chemically modify the surface so you could add for example a fluorophore and you can add uh, the cerubicine or any other things that you would like to use. So these are very potent systems to be able to target so for example by adding Alexa fluor uh, cubeta will preferentially be taken up by tumor cells so you can find various tumor cells with very low toxicity and then because you can also add uh, doxyrubicin you can see pretty much at least with mice in real time how you start destroying the tumor. So for example in this uh, uh, article the statements group what they did was to have this, uh, this uh, plant virus decorated with sci-fi so they could if this is a fluorophore so they can localize it where it goes in the, into the body then you can use uh, cisplatin, which is an uh, anti-tumoral drug, and PEG to stabilize a particle, and then they introduce this in mice, and what they see, it's amazing. Mice that had this cancer, but they, were, they had, or this, yeah, this tumor, but they were not treated, or they were added, or they only added PBS, they die after pretty much all of them after 28 days. However, when they added, uh, for example, uh, different uh, cancer therapies like cisplatin, then it could here you could see that you can, you know, increase the life all the way to most of them to 56 or 40 days. Unfortunately, in this case, they were not able to extend the life of all the mice. But this is very promising because at least in, in this uh, system that it's drawn here, they were able to extend the half-life of, of this cohort by at least uh, 50%. And, and this means that we still need to work on these systems, uh, but it's really promising. In this slide, we can see that there are different viral systems. We have bacteriophages, VLPs like MS2, Cubeta, uh, animal viruses like uh, hepatitis B, VSB, or SB40, and plants vir plant viruses like uh, Fusialis model virus, CCMB or BMB. Now this is very interesting because they were able to package, for example, uh, gadolinium or um, iron particles or even gadolinium and uh, fluorescent dyes. It, these can be by chemical conjugation or by encapsulation like quantum dots and this allows you to give you multiple uh, imaging systems. For example this uh, Fisialis model virus is very interesting because you can use different uh, fluorophores and you can couple them with mRNAs like hepatitis B and couple them with an enhanced green fluorescent protein. So there are different ways that you can create a system that can be imaged by either uh, PET scans, MRIs, or using some fluorescent type of microscopy or ident identification toxicity. So for example, here they, they use, again, VLPs. This is Cubeta. They added RNA, the GFP, so they have this mixture of, of fluorescent proteins and RNAs. They modify it selectively, and they intracranially insert it into the mice uh, brain and then they saw that the tumor was pretty much extremely well uh, localized. So pretty much all the particles localized on exactly where the tumor was implanted and not 
on the rest of the body. And this is very important because lots of cancers, uh, they progress to late stages because we were, we're not able to imagine them on time before they spread to the whole body. And here they were able to really show that, that pretty much all of the particles went, or most of the particles went to the tumor with a very high uh, selectivity. And uh, you can either, even add, for example, uh, uh, ferromagnetic particles and then do MRI and then sh exactly follow the, also not the fluorescence, not only the fluorescence, but also do these sectional uh, cuts and very good localize the, the, the virus and hence the, the tumor. And in this case, they use a Fisalian model of uh, viral like particle and this one, well, this is also kind of diagnostic because they also, in this article, loaded it with uh, doxorubicin of, and gadolinium. So, for example, we can deliver also genes. One of the best um, uh, studied systems are Cloud P model virus, and we know exactly how to assemble it so we can disassemble it, put solids in RNAs, and assemble it. And here's a very interesting experiment because here they try different types of ways to conjugate uh, silence in RNAs. For example, they use lipofectomy, which is what you normally use in the lab to, you know, uh, transfect them and to put silence in RNAs. And if you put TCMB, well, and silence in RNA, you really do not uh, knock down the expression of the gene of interest. If you add lipofectomy, lipofectomy, you can do it. But then what they were able to do was to modify CCMB and uh, and either add lipofectamine or other proteins or modify some of these proteins or make a mixture and they were able to increase the ability of, of the virus to introduce this silencing RNA to the cell. And if you have worked previously with lipofectamine, you know that it works really, really well. So here it's about three to four fold better to use silencing RNAs and lipofectamine. It's a very cool thing that people have done with uh, chimeric uh, and engineering BLPs. Here they're using the structural proteins of, uh, of murine leukemia virus and they have, uh, you know, modified so it's fused to uh, proteins uh, of interest and they can do it with non cleavage uh, mixture proteins or cleavage, uh, cleavage uh, proteins and they can also further modify it to uh, have nuclearization expert signals and nuclearization uh, signals so you can move the protein of interest either it can go just to the nucleus or it could go to the nucleus and the cytoplasm and here what they did was uh, to gene edit to do gene edit and here they were you know a specific uh, sequence they were changing in uh, a and t's uh, to g's and c's and by adding different you know versions of this system they were able to uh, edit all the way to 90 or 95 percent of the sequences of interest by using very small amounts of VLPs. And of course, as in this case, it, it turns out to happen, it really depends on the type of VLP you will be using. And so it turns out that they show that uh, GAC Paul Pro is the wall type protein and GAC AB, ABE is a chimeric protein and there is a balance of how much you, you can you can play with this stoichiometry to get the best uh, gene editing uh, profile. Now vaccines, unfortunately, uh, using VLPs is very attractive for vaccination. However, we have to be very really realistic. At least four years ago, very uh, there was a very uh, limited number of uh, of uh, clinical trials for VLP based vaccines. The two, the mainly, the, the most of the data has been on papillomavirus because it, this is the best vaccine we have. This is an amazing vaccine based on VLPs. And you can see there, you know, hepatitis, the, although we have a, a 
license of well, there's a license uh, vaccine made of BLPs for hepatitis B is not being further searched, and this pretty much has to do with hepatitis B vaccine being extremely good. Uh, but influenza has been really uh, uh, vaccine, vaccines against influenza and is really pushing its way because we need better vaccines against influenza. And well, uh, here chikungunya and Venezuelan equine encephalitis virus and Western equine encephalitis virus are very good candidates to develop vaccines using uh, VLPs. Now, this is uh, from uh, Doug Laurie, that, uh, one of the creators of this uh, HPV vaccine. And this is amazing because you first, you can take in vitro or in, you know, in a, in a bioreactor L1 protein monomers and these will form capsomers, and these capsomers will form, form BLPs. And these are non infectious because the L2 protein and the genome is missing. And now we have actually two different kind of vaccine. One is Gardasil, that uh, and, uh, includes all these four serotypes of HPV, Cervarix, that only includes two. And it all depends on what you want to do, what cancer you want to prevent. And well, there are uh, there's still room of, to improve because there are these uh, serotypes 31, 33, 45, 52, and 58, which there is no vaccine approved to eliminate these 20% of cancers. So this is an article we just published this year. It's not based on a virus, but this is the first step because this uh, protein you see here, it should be forming pentamers, but actually we now know that it's not forming pentamers. In green is this protein that should form pentamers, and the other color signifies different parts of an antigen against Zika, uh, well, an antigen from Zika that we're using to produce antibodies against this virus. So one of the problems we have is this protein is pretty much not present in the soluble fraction. It mostly goes in the soluble fra insoluble fraction. And it turns out that when we add this protein, which is not properly folded and it's not creating the pentamers we wanted, it still generates titers or antibodies with high titers against the virus. So for example, here we're able to do plaque uh, neutralization uh, assays and really determine that the antibodies generated by this protein will protect the, the mice against this virus. So it's an excellent vaccine. However, it, is, it does not follow a form pentamers. It's not very soluble. So for example, we have trying to figure out what is going on. And what we did was to use, for example, Athelfold. And in blue, uh, you see what it should be, the protein forming pentamers. And it is forming pentamers. But the protein in, in here in pink, the, the antigen, is completely misfolded. And it's all over the place. So we think that the reason why it's not uh, folding correctly, here is a simulation using alpha fold, and where we have a ratio of one of, uh, of, one of these antigen-fused bacterial carriers and four bacterial carriers. And then we can see that now that our bacterial carrier, our bacterial carrier is forming really nice pentamers, but most importantly, alpha fold predicts that now the antigenic region should be displayed in the proper conformation. So I'm showing you this case where we don't have complete success because we believe that we need to fuse all the knowledge that we have in creating VLPs with simulations, with prediction uh, pro uh, mechanisms such as uh, uh, AE to, you know, know before doing an experiment whether our assembly system will work or in case it's not giving us the right answer to try to figure out why. So what are the next challenges? Well, there are many. However, the most advanced field plus platform system so far use non enveloped viruses like plant viruses, bacteriophages, adenoviruses, or even simian 40 virus. Thus, this limits our ability to target particular trapezium because we cannot exchange that easily glycoproteins. These could change by using built piece of systems such as lentivirus or BSV, which can incorporate uh, 
glycoproteins through different sources. It also limits the cargo size because we saw in the previous lecture that, for example, CCMB, BMB, and even MS2, they can have a cargo limit of about 4,000 nucleotides. So we should go further like using dengue or chikungunya viruses because we can go all the way to 12,000 nucleotides. And if we're able to create VLPs using coronavirus-like uh, structures, they could, we could go all the way to 30,000 nucleotides. However, in the case of coronaviruses, we're still a long way to go to understand the rules of packaging. Now, we are not taking advantage of millions of years of evolution by redirecting positive sense single strand RNA viruses to transiently express a gene or cargo of interest in a particular virus. I'll show you in this and the previous lecture how we can use MS2 or CCMB or BMB or even CPMB to express some cargo. But we should be able to do this in more complicated viruses that will give us a longer range of messenger RNAs. Also, if we want to produce VLPs from a mammalian virus that is enveloped, then we must lower the cost of production. And this is not simple. One way to lower the cost of production is for, when, for example, when you have uh, XP cells, you can uh, transfect them or transform them with uh, uh, polyethylene means rather than uh, XP vectomy, which is very expensive. Uh, we also have to facilitate the scale-up procedure so we can go from small flask to bioreactors, and this is not easy to do. Uh, we also have to find better and cheaper techniques to increase the transfection and transduction efficiency. So far, for example, using calcium chloride is very good. Calcium chloride and phosphate buffer will give you very high efficiencies, but sometimes it's very hard to get rid of the particle that it creates this mixture. We have to increase the robustness of these assembly systems in mammalian uh, cells. And also, it, it will be great if we can control post-translational modifications so we can tailor it to our needs. Therefore, we need a rational design for more complex VLPs. VLPs. We need to use rational design to modify a virus so that the product is soluble, assembles into the proper structure and has the desired properties. We must couple simulations, uh, artificial intelligence, protein, rational design, and physical chemical properties to design novel VLPs. We must build a bridge between theory and experiments to have rational design and lower the failure rates. And these failure rates are very important because you start getting negative and negative results and you invest so much time to get mis misassembled VLPs that you will be discouraged. And with that, I have nothing else but thank all of you for your attention. Thank you very much. Here you have my email and my website. So if you have any questions before the uh, course starts, you can uh, contact me and we can chat a little bit. Thank you very much.